fixed to boot. And here I wish to push my own point of view, not only a shared point of view that I may have with others, such that occurred in Germany with the Greens, where people actually went into a political arena on the municipal level and on the community level with the hope of trying to strengthen the grassroots, re-empower people, and thus make them active agents in the social process who have control over their own social destinies. And community is ultimately the public realm, not to speak of the private realm, where the relationship between parent and child and parent and parent, or lover and lover, is worked out, and where the sensibilities of a more egalitarian approach are worked out, such that we can recover again citizenship that is active, and above all, a sense of participation that unites not only us as people, but also unites us again with the natural world as part of a participatory environment. In that sense, the word participation, or participatory, designates almost everything I have to say. Participatory in outlook rather than hierarchical. Participatory in techniques rather than domineering. Participatory in science. Participatory in human interrelationships. Participatory in community. And above all, a part politics of participation ultimately that restores power to individuals again so that they can manage this society or else we will become so disempowered, we will become so hollowed out, like the environment around us is being hollowed out, like the soil is being hollowed out, like the atmosphere is being rendered toxic, like the oceans are being turned into cesspools, like the forests are disappearing, we will become so emptied out that we will not even be able to articulate the word, who am I, will say, what is it that calls itself I? At that point, not only will we have lost control of our personal lives, of our social lives in a society already going mad, and moving out to space to destroy this planet from outside the planet. That's what it's coming to. With laser beams and God knows what else they have up there. But we will have finally become mere corpses so hollowed out that nuclear devastation or ecological devastation will just be the final burial act, the funeral of what is already dead in all of us or in generations to come. That is what is involved in restoring community, in restoring and recovering a new ecological sensibility, in recovering a new education, recovering a new technology, a new science, and a new relationship with the natural world. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I took one hour, less than that. Could last them an hour. Okay. Please feel free to ask any questions, say anything you want, voice any criticisms, do what you like. If there are more people that wish to ask questions or have comments to say at once, then I'll try to be as fair as possible in facilitating the being next for asking comments questions. It's become terribly common. <laughs> no, I'm very serious. Common sense at its best is visionary, is speculative. The best common sense I've often seen have been among children. And I'm not trying to praise children 
for anything more than the fact that they have imagination. What they kill in us, and what we call socialization and maturation, you know, when you're mature, you've learned to walk around the same circle until you begin to sink into the ground more and more, and then they cover up the earth and you're dead. What we are losing is imagination, and uh, that is the common sense that children initially provide an example of until a whole society conspires to destroy that in them. Uh, Nietzsche used the word, what we need is a cynical innocence, and his famous will to power, the opening lines practically of the word, work, if I'm not mistaken, it's been years since I read it. And what we need is at once the sophistication and the innocence of both uh, matured rationality on the one side, and at the same time, that refreshing naivete of a free and unimpaired imagination. I was in France in 68 during the May-June student uprising, and the outstanding slogan, of course, was imagination to, po to power. Be realistic, do the impossible. <laughs> I can go on and on with these exquisite demands that were being raised. What has really been killed in us, in addition to personality, in addition to a sense of individuality and selfhood, that gives us the confidence not to feel that we have to be on top of the heap among other things, that reinforces a whole hierarchical mentality. When you feel inferior, you are inferior, even though you're not inferior. You know what I mean. You develop what they call a complex. So what we need now is the recovery of an imagination that can see in the idiosyncratic and the eccentric and the great richness of variety about us a place in the whole, you see, that is what has been lost in what is commonsensical. And what we now have are stereotyped images. We look at too many pictures, whether on television or in the cinema, or in our books, or in our periodicals, you see. We read captions at most, in many cases. Not about that saying this is true of everyone, of course. I'm saying this is all too common. So what we have to do is we cover imagination. That, I would say, is the most common thing that we have to find. And children start out with that, and we drive it right out of them. We drive it out. There's a whole system to drive it out of them. There's a vast organization of what we call our institutions to drive out that imagination, to make them realistic. But if the reality is untrue, and please per permit me just to make a little animate version on this point. If the reality is untrue, then the reality doesn't, is not real. <laughs> it exists in its falsehood, you know what I'm saying? If the reality is irrational, Star Wars is the best example of it. How insane can you get? If the reality is not real in the sense that it's not true, it's nightmarish, then that's not realism. The highest realism is the utopian daydreaming of people, whether in their everyday moment when they sit and look out of an office window and develop fancies, be it a Caribbean vacation or a, a beautiful act of sexual activity, whatever you like at its best, or the imagination of people, of children, who personify doors, chairs, <laughs> talk to, and have that spontaneous, free-giving flow. And our main job is not to destroy that. Our main job is to impart rationality to it such that it is not destructive of that imagination. So that is the common sense I tra treasure the most, that which we all share in common until it's driven out of us. Please. Yes. Am I opposed to gentrification? Is that what you said? Oh, objectification. I'm sorry. I have a little trouble hearing. Please forgive me. I have all the ailments of a man in his mid-60s, so... One of them is loss of hearing, somewhat. Do you, do you agree with that? Do I agree with what? That applause, that us applauding you is a form of objectification. No. It's, it's a cordial, friendly tribute, and I applauded you back. 